while I'm fairly new to the L mount, I'm definitely not new to today's brand maker. We featured them a lot way back when, especially on the Fujifilm X mount, and had some good times, let's be fair. So I thought, you know, new camera, S5, gotta give these old boys a try with this Maker 50mm f1.2 that I'm using to shoot right now wide open. I can already see a few little problems. There seems to be some serious curvature going on, but that's not. this is not really what the lens is for. So we should just have a look at it up close, see what's what, and get some random samples on the go. And then it'll be over to you guys and girls, as always, in the comments below. So yeah, let's just crack on. There we go. Right, so we've got that's a lens. There's a lens cloth. Little warranty paper. And that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. The lens itself. Nice snap cap there. This hood. Yeah, that's okay. If I can get it on. It's a little bit plastic here, I'm afraid. Let's take that off. Do like that. Do like that. This is annoying me. I can't get it to stay on properly. Give it a good, give it the last bit of twist and that'll stay on. That's fine, yeah. Mount itself, nice metal L mount in there. Very decent. What did I say? <laughs> give it a little twist, Amarin. It's cold metal. Nice. So, aperturing, D clicks, yeah. Actually, as this is an L mount, let's see how we fare with that. Might actually turn out. So like it, never did like it on my Fujifilm gear, but you know, this is a different world. So one, two, smooth down to 22. Now for the manual focus ring, that's okay, that's good. Nice grippy bits there, bit of texture from, well, it says 60 centimeters, but that's just off there. That's maybe a little bit less, so that could be fun. And then to infinity here, it's a decent, well dampened manual focus ring. Not the biggest throw, but not bad, not bad at all. It's quite a chunk of a thing. Let's take this off again. I think it's gonna give it a good. <sighs> Gotta be very careful with this. It doesn't seem to be, unless I've put it on wrong. I don't think so. There we go. Give it a little bit of a loosen and we're in. 67 mil filter thread. Weighs 620 grams, that'll be with the hood as well, and costs, at the time of recording this piece at least, £359.99, but is she any good? My first session or two with this lens was less than inspiring. Sure, the focusing handles fine and the aperture ring gets the job done easy enough. For video shooters, there's the pro that the focus throw is fairly short, but even though the aperture ring is clickless, I'm not sure that's more than just a side bonus here. Using focus peaking and setting the joystick press to zoom into the focus point really helps me get more keepers when shooting at f1.2. Now as my S5 uses a contrast detection system for focusing, it's not always easy to get the shot even with focus peaking and at this aperture life is naturally harder. The question is, is it worth the hassle?
I've heard people say online that the image quality is outstanding. I guess their copy is better than mine. So what do I dislike? Well, if I was to be picky, the bucket can be messy, especially in the foreground with trees and branches, for example. There is chromatic aberration, purple fringing, if you're not too careful and you go looking for it. And naturally, there's vignetting wide open. Contrast is pretty low too, so there's that. Now, before we get into the positives, and I do much prefer talking about things like that, <laughs> you know, it's good to make the best out of a situation. Before we get on to that, we're going to put up a clip now where we show the aperture being stopped down between frames with nothing else changed. So, yeah, you know the deal. Here it is. The lens has grown on me somewhat since my initial testing and that's why I try to never put out a video without spending some real time with the gear in question. It's sharp enough, wide open and it cleans up very nicely as you stop down a bit. I like the colours that it's rendering and it's pretty easy to work with the files. Video shooting too can be fun, albeit if you blow out the background with lights, the bouquet is, well, this is still the positive section so... I'll leave that for you to decide in the next unedited sample section. Also look out for flaring and ghosting. Let us know in the comments below if you like the flaws. This is definitely not a Pixel Peepers bit of kit. <music> At the time of recording, this is going for $359.99, so is it worth it? Well, if you really want a manual f1.2 lens and are happy with it being less than perfect, if you can make the character and the flaws work for you, sure, of course. Me personally, I'm happy with my Panasonic 50mm f1.8, which costs £60 more, has autofocus, excellent optics, but of course, it's not f1.2. Now, you might not have the extra cash or the need for autofocus, then you might want to play with an F1.2 lens at a budget, and that's okay. Just don't be too critical about this one. Just get out and enjoy it. What excites me more about this brand are the cine lenses that they produce, and the just announced 10mm is definitely piquing my interest. As always, we want to hear from you if you've used this lens. So let us know how you feel about it in the comments below. Until then, stay safe. And I'll see you very soon.